Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Yusuf again. Uh, this was a case of nanophthalmos. Uh, she has a very small pupil and uh, posterior synechia uh, most of the clock hours. And this posterior synechia actually was a, with a side effect of uh, the uh, peripheral iridectomy that was done years ago. Uh, for which case I'll uh, she had a nuclear cataract in addition and I uh, had to remove it. So uh, she had a very shallow anterior chamber and uh, this total posterior synechia, so was, uh, which I'm breaking now with the uh, via tracks. I usually, uh, usually use the Vision Blue to stain the capsule without uh, putting any air or anything like that, just just inject it into the anterior chamber. It's gonna push out the all the content of the anterior chamber and we'll replace it with the Vision Blue, and it works and stains very well without putting air or under heel or anything like that. So that's the Beeler uh, Iris Retractor. You introduce and you hook the proximal part and you just push to uh, to stretch the pupil equally uh, to allow the surgery to proceed safely. So this way the pupil will be enlarged. Uh, I usually do that uh, three times, uh, one in the middle and uh, one in each side just to equally stretch the pupil without producing much damage to the sphincter. It's very, very gentle. Okay. Uh, after I do that, I'll, I'll inject usually the uh, Vitrax because some of it has been lost already. Uh, with the uh, uh, when you introduce something like the beeler, it just you lose some of that outside, and the chamber is already uh, shallow. But some, sometimes we need to uh, to actually do a vitreous tap to try to deepen the anterior chamber. But I need, didn't need that in this case. What I'm putting now is the uh, Mortar pupil expansion ring, which uh, which helps a lot of these cases. Uh, it's introduced and placed easily and uh, without needing uh, uh, putting uh, to put uh, flexible iris retractors which will need uh, four or five extra wounds uh, and it's not this is much easier to implant and faster and and it, it produce an equally rounded pupil rather than a squarish or diamond shaped pupil with the iris retractors uh, now we'll proceed with capsular rexes So um, you will see that the, the although we didn't use the air, uh, the Vision Blue has stained the capsule very well, and you can see to uh, do the capsule rexes easily. Uh, we always try to end up with the capsule rexes at uh, five millimeters to five point five millimeters to have this nice overlap of uh, the capsule rexes edge over the optic of the lens, uh, about half a millimeter all all around which uh, decreases the, significantly the amount of uh, posterior capsule pacification you would get. So pre proceed as usual, the uh, hydrodissection and hydrodelineation and ocular nuclear rotation. Uh, can see some of the uh, vision blue still coming from underneath the iris because uh, we inject the vision blue underneath there blindly before <laughs> before we dilated the pupil okay, it still comes out there I use the chopping technique to remove the uh, nucleus here when you introduce the uh, chopper uh, through second wounds Cases of shallow chambers, you, sometimes it's difficult to pass it uh, across the uh, pupil expansion ring. So just be careful because sometimes that can dislodge the ring from its place and just adds uh, some time to the surgery. Just be extra careful with that. Again, the, I'll, I'll remove it using the chopping technique. As, as long as you have a nicely di dilated pupil and it's stable, uh, the, pr the rest of the surgery is... Uh, almost as a normal person or normal surgery uh, uh, having an anophthalmos her lens power was uh, uh, 
uh, as I remember it was 35 diopter or something like that I can't remember exactly but uh, it was something like that and uh, I usually use the Technus uh, Technus ZA 9003 but in this case uh, we can't because of the the end up the uh, the lens power is up to 30 I think uh, so uh, in this case I'll use the SN6080 uh, lens now the J cannula the nice thing about J cannula here you can do it blindly on underneath the uh, the pupil the iris uh, without uh, seeing this part here safely and uh, you can see that this this is effective and it takes about maybe 10 to 15 seconds to clean up the capsule and it cleans up the areas that you don't actually see and uh, this is very uh, important in cases of small pupil like that um, I'm injecting heal on now to, Im to implant the lens uh, as I said earlier the lens is uh, SN60 AT because of the uh, of the high power needed uh, to uh, correct her uh, high hypropia she's an anophthalmic patient Uh, when I implant the uh, S, the uh, the alkaline lenses, I don't go through the wound actually with the injector. I just put it on the lip, so I don't don't need to widen the the wound. Uh, this wound is about uh, 2.85 uh, millimeters. So I implanted the lens and dislodged the the uh, the ring to remove it before I remove the viscoelastic, so that you don't need to implant it again. Uh, to, to, to remove the to viscoelastic, it's very easy. You just go in with the with the tooth forceps and just roll it out of the anterior chamber. Now you can do, wash out the the viscoelastic and do any IA that you need to do. Uh, be careful with the uh, cases of small pupil uh, material can be hiding somewhere and uh, you'll discover the fir first post op a uh, little piece of nucleus here a little piece of cortex here so just be extra careful uh, looking for stuff and you can use irrigation to uh, try to stir things up and find uh, the material okay. the wounds are hydrated I inject the Avalox with uh, to hydrate the wound, so, so this protects against endothermitis. I hydrate the wound, the sides of the wound, and paracentesis, and inject some of it inside and on the outside.